They thought they were going to win. And they've been unbelievably nasty, really nasty. And they thought they spent close to $30 million on this kid who forgot to live in the community that he was in. I mean, you know. <laughs> Look, I'll tell you about the Democrats. I am making it a little bit hard to get their support, but who cares? That's the president celebrating this, the big Republican win in this past week's Georgia congressional district. The 6th district, the Republican won with nearly 52% of the vote. Democrats had invested a lot of time and money in this race. They hoped for a win here, so a big setback for the Democrats. But whether this is a giant indicator of the 28 term midterm climate, that's more debatable. Let's look here. On the plus side for Democrats, they currently have an eight-point advantage when voters are asked, what do you want next year, a Democratic or Republican Congress? Democrats have an eight-point edge right now in the NBC Wall Street Journal poll, comparable to 2006 when the Democrats took back the House, a much bigger edge for Democrats now than the Republicans had in 1994 and in 2010, two huge years for Republicans. So Democrats can look at that, feel reasonably confident heading into next year. But there are some mixed signals. Again, this is good for the Democrats. When you ask who's looking out for the middle class or who's better dealing with health care, Democrats have a big edge. Republicans minus 13 points on the middle class question. Republicans minus 17 points on who's best to deal with health care question. So good news here for the Democrats. But two issues that often drive voters, who's best dealing with the economy? Who's best to shake up Washington, D.C.? Republicans have a good edge on those issues going in. Here's one thing Republicans look at at this NBC Wall Street Journal poll. Five tumultuous months of Trump, right? They started this way. Add that up. 47% of Americans back in January said they wanted the president or Republicans in Congress taking the lead. 41% said they wanted Democrats taking the lead. Five months later, 45% for the Democrats and 46% for Republicans. So a slight rise for the Democrats. But again, Republicans look at the last five months and say, OK, we slipped a bit. But that's not so bad. Numbers aside, some House Democrats took the Georgia loss as a grounds for a coup. I don't think people in the Beltway are realizing just how toxic the Democratic Party brand is in so many of the countries. Do you that's think right. Nancy Pelosi is more toxic than Donald Trump? You know what? The honest answer is, in some areas of the country, yes, she is. I think that in cer certain areas, like in some of these special election districts, it doesn't benefit our candidates to be tied to her. Are the Democrats overreacting, going after their leader, Nancy Pelosi? Or they have every reason, 0 for 4 in these special elections, but all pretty solid Republican districts. Yeah, they, they were all uh -huh. solidly Republican di districts, but they used, Republicans effectively used Nancy Pelosi as a boogeyman in each of those districts. They had an enemy to run against. Uh, and look, Pelosi, is defiant. She uh -huh. says she's not going anywhere. She said, tells her, telling her critics in the Democratic caucus uh -huh. to bring it on. But there's no question that this is probably the weakest position that she has been in on top of her caucus because of these lingering questions about whether or not she's the right person to bring this party back to the majority and whether or not it's time for uh -huh. a new generation of leadership, given the fact that she is such a big target uh, for the Republicans. That being said, she is a powerhouse fundraiser. She has a lot of support among the left in her caucus. Uh, people have a lot of loyalty. Uh, and Democrats could still win back the House despite all of that because of the president's poor numbers, the Democrats doing better in the generic ballot, as well as there are roughly two dozen seats that Republicans occupy in districts that Hillary Clinton won, and that's about the number they need to take back the House. Just as we continue the conversation, I just want to bring Nancy Pelosi into it, because whether you're a Democrat or Republican, or whether you like Nancy Pelosi or you don't, if you love politics, if you love politics, this answer was great. As far as some of the enthusiasm in my caucus, I always listen uh, to my members. I respect the ambition that exists in any caucus. It's a part of our life. Uh, when it comes to personal ambition, having fun on TV, have your fun. I love the arena. I thrive on competition, and uh, I welcome uh, the, the discussion. But I am honored by the support. Every action has a reaction. I try to say that to them. Every attack provokes a massive reaction. Look at that smile. She will <laughs> shiv you, make no mistake. <laughs> right? But there is, there's a generational divide in the right. Democratic Party. They're at a crossroads. Clinton didn't work out. A lot of people think Nancy Pelosi's old news. Fine. The midterms, much like they will be for President Trump, are going to be a, 
an absolute pivotal test right. for Nancy Pelosi and the future of the Democratic Party. It's hard to understand, though, the strategy behind the breakaway Democrats if they don't have enough support to put it over the top. What is the strategy well, of dividing if, the Democratic Party? If their Party? strategy is to get Nancy Pelosi to sit down with them and others and maybe actually do what Hillary Clinton never did, have a compelling economic message, that might help. Uh, you can't be just anti-Trump. You can't be just, let's hope the Russia investigation finds something terrible about Trump. How about being for something that affects people out there worried about paying for college or worried about getting or keeping a job?